Hello and good evening. It's an awesome time to be with us this evening for our Q&A segment. Uh, tonight we are dealing with a very, very crucial subject, and that subject says, what, what do you do? We are dealing with uh, uh, purpose and marriage. <clears throat> purpose and marriage. Hello, Mrs. Antonia. I greet you. Good evening. Glad to have you this evening with me. <laughs> Welcome. Thanks for joining in. I, I always really appreciate you for joining in. Welcome. Welcome. I greet you too, sis. <laughs> Today we're going to be dealing with something very, very key, something very, very crucial, very, very crucial, and it has to do with purpose and marriage. How do we create a balance between purpose and marriage? Very, very important. Very, very important. We have, we have situations where... Uh, certain people are getting married or are planning to get married and um, one person's purpose is more or less on the opposite end with the other person and after they they've gotten married <laughs> Yvonne, thanks for joining in. I love you. Good evening, Yvonne. I love you. Welcome. <laughs> this is a very crucial one. <laughs> Don't worry. I'll give you an opportunity very shortly to come on. Let's do a little introduction as we proceed. <laughs> I love you, Yvonne. Just hang on a little bit. Okay, so we are looking at, you know, uh, how do we balance purpose and marriage? Uh, a lot of people have found themselves in marriage uh, and um, it's as though this is not what I bargained for. They get into marriage and it's like, okay, I, I don't get where this guy is going. I, I don't get where this lady... A lot of times, you know, the ladies get frustrated because um, they are seeing certain things in the lives of their husband that they probably did not think they bargained for. And it's like he's veering off here, he's veering off here, he wakes up today with this, he wakes up to tomorrow with that. And he's like, okay, he's the boss. So he doesn't even need to consult the woman a lot of times. <laughs> so the woman is confused, you know, because she's in this ship. Where is my marriage going to? Where is my marriage headed? And that's because uh, the guy just, if I may use this word, just came up with certain things that doesn't look like he has direction because of purpose. Purpose is very key. Uh, we also have situations where um, the lady... Uh, by the way, there's this school of thought that says that a woman's job in the home is to help the man. I see, I mean, I hear that a lot. And uh, of course, back in the days, especially in, in the African setting, we have situations where um, the woman is seen as the housewife. You know, just stay at home, take care of the home, be domestic. Uh, raise the kids and all of that. Um, of course, that's what we grew up to see <laughs> in life. Yvonne knows where we are coming from. <laughs> but you see, um, we are in the 21st century. And so many things have changed over time. Not for bad, but for good. 
And tonight we want to look at exactly what, because the Apostle Paul, a lot of times, you know, uh, I crave the indulgence of anybody who may be watching this video who may not be a Christian. I'm a Christian, so at times I do make reference to the Bible. But that doesn't mean that you wouldn't get blessed from whatever it is I am sharing. So Apostle Paul, a lot of times, you know, when he's trying to pass across some of his teachings, he would say things like, from the beginning, it was not so. From the beginning, it was not so. Uh, we even see a situation, of course, where, where, where Jesus responded to the apostles, sorry, to the Pharisees and the Sadducees, who asked him some questions that why did Moses allow this? Why did Moses allow this? And Jesus said, because of the hardness of your heart. So even some of the things that Moses allowed that they were practicing uh, was not in accordance with what God would have wanted. But Moses had to do it. Jesus gave the answer. He said, because of the hardness of your heart. In other words, if your heart is not hardened, Moses wouldn't have gone that route. And so God expects so much from us when it has to do with our marriage, when it has to do relationships. So we have to go back from the beginning. What, how is it supposed to be? And so in answering that question, you see, because the issue of purpose and marriage is very, very crucial and very, very important. I'm, I'm, going, to, I'm going to put two things together tonight. I, I have some word for the singles. I have some word for the married. So let's begin. I want to start with this quote from Miles Monroe, and it says, Until purpose is discovered, existence has no meaning. I don't know if you heard me. Let me read it again. Until purpose is discovered, existence had, has no meaning. For purpose is the source of fulfillment. Purpose is the source of fulfillment. I'm very, I'm very, I'm very excited uh, that uh, 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 we have uh, uh, our sister joining us this evening, Mrs. Antonia, and uh, she has written quite some books. And you see, those books you wrote, madam, came as a result of a cry within you. I know people who have written books, you know, to make money. But that's not why you wrote those books, because I've followed the journey of how you wrote those books. I've heard the story, and I know the passion behind it. Now, imagine if your husband was not with you on this. Imagine, again, if not just that he wasn't with you, imagine if he attempted to put a stop to it. Now, it's possible you would have been frustrated. You see, because every day you wake up, something is burning on your inside. And that's what Miles Moreau is trying to say. He says, until purpose is discovered, existence has no meaning. For purpose is a source of fulfillment. Every time you write a book, there's a sense of fulfillment that comes. You've achieved one reason for why you are alive. You have achieved destiny. You've achieved a step towards your destiny. And so it's very, very important that we, are, that we realize the place of purpose. Hadiza, good evening. You're welcome. Thank you, Mrs. Antonia. I'm glad you understand where I'm coming from. Glad to have you. Josiah, you're welcome. Glad to have you too. Good evening. All right, so... I wrote something down here again. Purpose is what gives meaning to anything from a cooking utensil to a sports equipment or television set. It's purpose that gives it meaning and the achievement of that purpose gives it fulfillment. So what is purpose? Again, Miles Moreau defines purpose as the original intent and cause for the creation or the existence of a thing. Listen to that definition again. Purpose is the original intent and cause for the creation or the existence of a thing. Okay, now, this is a notebook. It has 
different pages. It has a cover and it's bound into a hardcover notebook. Now, this notebook did not just appear. This notebook was thought about because of purpose. The question is, what is this book going to be used for? It's going to be used to write. And so it was designed to achieve the purpose for which it was intended. So purpose precedes intention. The purpose of a thing determines... So imagine an architect now sitting down to design a building. The first question the architect is going to be asking is, what is this building going to be meant for? And then after he has answered that question, he goes into his imaginative space and begins to design, begins to uh, 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 draw. He's trying to transfer his imagination based on purpose into his design. So when you look at a fan, for instance, it is designed with purpose in mind. So even the blades, the way it is tilted so that as it turns, it's going to be blowing air to cool the person that a fan is blowing based on purpose. Take, for instance, a fork. A fork is designed based on purpose because it's going to be used to pick bits of food to eat. So, I usually tell people, for instance, that when we do not know the purpose of a thing, abuse of that thing is inevitable. Let me explain. So, if you look at a fork, for instance, okay, let me take a teaspoon, for instance. If I had a teacup here with a teaspoon, I would use my teaspoon either to take my, you know, sugar, if it's the um, granulated type, I will stir it, I could use it to take my uh, beverage, if it's Milo, Bon Vita, or whatever, and I'll stir my cup of tea. And after I'm done with that, I'm done with the teaspoon, and I drop it in the saucer, and I can drink my tea. That is what a teaspoon is meant for. But it will amaze you that someone could actually use a teaspoon to eat rice. Hello, follow me closely. And guess what? It will work. Because the teaspoon can actually pick up grains of rice. But here's the deal. That teaspoon was not meant to eat rice. And so even though it worked, and someone could go ahead using it every day, consistently to eat rice, the teaspoon was not created or designed to eat rice. Therefore, that teaspoon is being abused. If the teaspoon could speak up, it would say, hey, this is not what I was created for. Purples. Purples. So many of us are in, unintentionally or intentionally, depending on where, which, which, which uh, direction it's coming from, are abusing our lives or allowing our lives to be abused because we are being used for the purpose for which we weren't created for. Now, like I said earlier, according to Miles Monroe, purpose precedes creation. In other words, before something was created, his, its purpose had to be determined. So you don't see a carpenter, you know, walking with wood, nail, and hammer, and you ask the carpenter, what are you doing? And he's like, I don't know. I don't know. Imagine if a carpenter were to give you that response. I don't know. And then he's just walking, walking, walking. Then all of a sudden, wow, I produced a chair by accident. <laughs> Not at all. The carpenter would know that, okay, I'm, I want to design, I, I, I want to create a table, or I want to create a chair. I'm going somewhere, follow me closely. That's what the carpenter will have in his mind first, before he goes into, okay, what will this chair look like? What will this table look like? 
So the, the, the reason or the purpose for the table or for the chair will determine the design of the table or of the chair. And all the while, as he builds it, he's going to be ensuring that the design fits or suits the purpose. So a lot of times in the Bible, we see God telling Moses, ensure, ensure that thou build according to the pattern that was showed thee in the mount. You see, God had given Moses an instruction to build him a tabernacle. And so many times, repeatedly, we, see, we hear God telling Moses, make sure, make sure that you build according to the pattern should be. Don't deviate from the pattern because the pattern or call it um, 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 uh, the architectural drawing is supposed to be a representation of what the final outcome should be. So you cannot change it, Moses. And not blessed. Good evening. And Obong, how are you? Welcome. Thanks for joining in. You can't change it, Moses. No, you can't. Stick with the pattern. It's important to stick with the pattern because if you miss the pattern, you miss the design. And if you miss the design, you miss what was in the mind of the creator. Okay, talking about creation, talking about purpose. Now, let's go into something else. Are you aware that you are created by God. You and I are created by God. Now, whether you're a Christian, whether you're a Muslim, uh, uh, it doesn't matter your religion now. We all believe that we are created by a being, God. And think about it for a moment. Uh, well, with exception of those who don't believe there is God, with the exception of those who um, believe in evolution and the Big Bang Theory, well, I don't know, because I don't believe in that. So, uh, But follow me closely. Follow me closely. You'll get what I'm trying to communicate. We all are created by God. And here's the thing. Can you imagine that there is no body on the face of the earth nor will ever be in the future whether near future or distant future that has the same fingerprints like you like you that explains the uniqueness of you as an individual no come to think about it No two people have accidental fingerprints. We have lookalikes, yes. We even have twins. And even the twins have separate fingerprints. Not identical. Then for those of us who are Christians, now think about it. That the Bible says that the hair on our head are numbered. Not counted. Counted would have been one, two, three, four, five. Okay, there are five strands of hair on your head. And then if you wake up tomorrow and one strand is off, we'll say, oh, which strand is off? I don't know. I just know that one is off. So that leaves us with how many strands? Four. But that's not what the Bible says. The Bible says the hair on your head are numbered, not counted, numbered. Meaning that while you were combing your hair in the morning, the strand that fell off, God knows the exact strand that fell off from, you know, while you're combing your hair. That's how detailed God is about you as a person. Follow me closely. Now, if this God created you and created me, do you think that he did not have an intention in his, in his mind while he was creating you and I? You think God did not see that I'll be holding this Instagram uh, 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 session today for married and relationship folks? Now, imagine if this is not what I was doing tonight. Imagine if I was in a beer parlor somewhere drinking. <laughs> Just imagine that. <laughs> that would have been abuse of purpose. That would have been me living my life outside why I was created. Think about it for a second. There's a reason God created you. There's a reason God created me. 
And the fact that you were created and you exist as a unique individual is proof positive that you have a reason for why you were created. A lot of people don't even know that reason. A lot of people will never know that reason. Not because anybody's hiding it from them, but you see, when you buy a product from the market, like a phone or whatever gadget it is, even this mouse, this computer mouse that I'm using here now, I bought it. A lot of them come with manuals. In other words, the manual is supposed to tell you how that product is supposed to work. So when you buy a phone, even though a lot of people just use that phone to call, to do Facebook, to do Instagram, it will amaze you the, the, the many more things that that, that that phone can do that you are not aware of simply because you do not open the package to read into the manual. And so God is there. He created you. Have you ever asked him, Lord, why did you create me? Have you ever asked him that question? Very important. Because if you haven't, I mean, he's not, he's not going to bombard your life. And just like <laughs> a great man of God that I love so much said, he said a lot of us are here just to balance the ecosystem. God forbid. God forbid. God forbid that I'm just here to balance the ecosystem. There's a reason I was born. And I am fulfilling that purpose right now. And I'm going to be fulfilling more of it. There are a lot of books in here that are going to come out. What is your purpose in life? That's the first question to ask. Now, talking about marriage and relationship. You see, um, it is very, very key that you are connected to a man or to a woman who acknowledges your purpose in life and respects it. If a man would marry you and turn you into a housewife, singles, listen to me, don't marry such a man. If a woman, on the other hand, will marry you and want to tamper with your purpose, or want to change your purpose simply because they don't like it or they, they prefer one or the other, don't marry such a woman. We see a lot of uh, 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 even parents who have tried you know, to tamper with the purpose of their children simply because they want that child to become something that they never were. So maybe they wanted to be a lawyer and they couldn't be a lawyer for whatever reason. So this child of theirs, they want a the child to be a lawyer. Go and read law. Go and read medicine. And we have a lot of such folks who have graduated, even with first class, from law or from medicine, and they are frustrated practicing medicine. They are frustrated practicing law. Because they are, mm -mm, it's, it's not just there. What is your purpose in life? Later on, before we... Be, 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 before we round up, I'm going to point out one or two ways in which you can identify what your purpose, what your assignment on earth is. Because a lot of people don't know. And like I said, a lot of people will never know. God forbid. Like Archbishop Benson Yudawasa said, that a lot of people have died and will still die with story buildings in their stomach. With wealth, with prosperity, with abundance in their stomach. Because they are not able to bring it out. They are not able to give birth to it. And never you think that purpose is something that is just simple or something that is just easy. No. The Bible says, as Zion travails, it gives birth. So delivering of your purpose is like a woman giving birth. There's going to be travail. There's going to be pain. Those seasons are going to come where you are going to push out that baby. But you must understand that that is the reason you exist. That is the reason you are alive. That is the reason you should wake up tomorrow morning. Purpose. And like Miles Monroe said, fulfillment comes from the achievement of purpose. Okay. Um, two things I want us to note this evening <laughs> as I share with us. It is essential to note that the production of the product does not begin until the purpose of the product has been established. I explained that imagine a carpenter who just wakes up and begins to, you know, knock wood around. And you're like, what are you building? And he's like, I don't know. 
Uh, th that's, that, that doesn't make sense. So, so what, what this is, like I said, things to note, it is essential to note that the production of a product does not begin until the purpose of the product has been established. So are you a product? Are you created? Yes, you are. You and I are created by God. And before you were created, see, your birth was not an accident. Your being given birth to was never an accident. I usually would tell people, I say, even if your mother was a prostitute, pardon that language, but even if your mother was a prostitute, in other words, she, 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 she was just having sex for, to make money, not because she wanted a child. And even if you were as a result of such, you are not an accident. Your mother thought she made a mistake. You were in God's divine plan. Purpose was at work. Purpose was at work. The second thing I want us to note is the success of the project is not determined until the product does exactly what its purpose requires. I read that again, please. Pay attention. The success of the product is not determined until the product does exactly what its purpose requires. In other words, if you are not doing what God created you for, you are not a success in God's eyes. You are not. Look at me very well. I'm talking to you now. I said you are not a success in the eyes of God if you do not fulfill why he created you. I always give people this story. Pay attention. Good evening, Saitumba. I greet you. Welcome. Okay, so imagine, let me say what I just said again. <laughs> I said you are not a success in life if you are not doing what God created you to do. Okay, let me give this an analogy. I like giving it a lot when I'm, when I'm trying to explain uh, one or two things. Thank you. Good evening, my brother. Imagine that you went into school to study law. And then somewhere along the line, you fell in love with medicine. But you, listen, you were admitted to study law. But you fell in love with medicine and then you started attending medical school and medicine classes and lectures. You went in, you did all the assignments, you did all the tests, you took all the notes. You were very good. You were the best in the class. You did tests and you passed them with flying colors. You did, uh, ex you did the exam and you passed the exam with flying colors. But here's the problem. When it comes to the day when the scores are going to be entered, into columns of students of law, or rather of medicine, they won't be able to allocate your score anywhere because you don't belong there. Pay attention. You don't belong there. So you have grades that cannot be assigned. On the other hand, when you were admitted, which is the faculty of law, the school of, uh, of, 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 of law, you didn't write exams. You didn't attend classes. So you don't have any grades to be allocated. You'll be given zero. You'll be given zero. So in that parable that Jesus gave, where at the end... The master said, well done, thou good and faithful servant. If you and I are expecting that at the end of our lives, we are going to receive that kind of commendation from God, we cannot get it unless we are at the center of his will and purpose for your life and for my life. Why were you born? The reason for which you were born is why you are on earth, primarily. Everything we do on earth, whether it's relationship, whether it's marriage, 
happens because we are on earth. But the reason you and I are on earth is because you were born and sent into this world for something. Okay, so finally, a man wakes up and walks up to a young lady and says, will you marry me? And the young lady says, yes, I will marry you. <laughs> Thank you. Why are you born? And, and that question only you can answer. I can't give you that answer. But like I said, towards the closing part of this uh, session, I'm going to point out how you can identify why you were born. So stick with me. So a man walks up to a long, young lady, will you marry me? And the young lady says, yes. <laughs> now this young lady is an individual all by herself. She had a dream. She had direction in life. She had certain things that she wanted to become. Then she marries a man. And then after marriage, she wakes up one day and, you know, for courtesy, of course, the man is the head of the home. So she approaches him, uh, honey, I want to do this. And the man says, no. Honey, I want to do this. And the man says, no. Okay, how about this? And he says, no. How about this? And he says, no. How about? How about? Brother. <laughs> Calm down. This young woman that you are married to today was born for a reason and for a purpose. You can't, you can't just um, control her life simply because you are her husband. Of course, you are there to give guidance. You are there to give uh, direction. You see, because like the Bible says, two are better than one. Again, I crave the indulgence of anybody who is listening or watching who, who may not be a Christian, see, because this is a marriage and relationship uh, 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 session, and I deal with you know, Christians and non-Christians alike. But I always explain that because I'm a Christian, so a lot of times I bring some tips you know, from uh, what I believe in, and I, it obviously always blesses. It always blesses. So... The Bible says two are better than one. In other words, if I'm married like I'm married today, my getting married should make me a better person. It shouldn't diminish who I am. It shouldn't reduce me. But sadly, that's what marriage does to a lot of people today. It reduces them. It makes them less of who they are or who they were meant to be. It is supposed to improve you. So, like I always tell a lot of singles, when you are dating, when you are courting, that is when to get to know the person you are about to get married to. That is when you are supposed to ask questions. That's not the time to be going on, 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 on you know, uh, dinner. That's not the time to be going to movies and you are forgetting the important things. <laughs> Yvonne, I love you. Thank you so much. <laughs> I, you can. I know you can. That's not when to be doing this. You are supposed to have done that before you got married. So that you know who this lady is, you know who this guy is, and you know how much they are supposed to give to your life and to your purpose. Very, very important. Very, very important. A lot of people suffer in marriages today. Now, if, in as much as, of course, uh, if you're married today, uh, I'm not telling you to just go home today and say, ah, I listened to one message today, I don't do it again. Mm -mm. No, that's not what I'm saying. There are solutions. There are steps to take to correct the anomaly. It is not an easy one but if you are willing and your partner is also willing to walk these steps through, you can come out victorious on the other side. But if you are single today, I'm saying it is a very crucial thing to... By the way, let me say this at this point. Purpose is stronger than marriage. Did you hear me? Let me say it again. Purpose is stronger than marriage. 
I'm going to say one more time. Purpose is stronger than marriage. What do I mean? For someone who has understood his or her purpose, this thing keeps you up at night when others are sleeping. And if someone in the name of marriage, be it your husband or be it your wife, is trying to fight your purpose, what that person will end up doing is keeping you or putting you in frustration. That person will keep you or put you in pain. And so while every other person is excited, happy with life around you, you will be bitter. You wake up every day and see where the Bible says two are better than one, than one. In other words, when you get married to someone, it is supposed to make you better. But now it is making you bitter. Think about it. Why would two people who were once in love suddenly just fall out with each other? To the point that somebody, I mean, we hear about it on social media, on the news and everywhere. I mean, it, it, somebody will just wake up and stab the other person to death. Husbands kill wife, wife kill husband. One person poisoning the other person, pouring acid, setting the other one on fire. I mean, we've heard, we have, we've heard all kinds of stories, but these were two people who were once madly in love with each other. That's because even after getting married, there's something on the ins A lot of times it's not infidelity. Yes, infidelity causes it. I know. I've heard some stories. But a lot of times it's not. It, it, it's, 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 it's deeper than that. This person is in bondage because of the other person. And by the way, let me say this at this point. Now, a lot of the things I may be saying in this session, you know, um, it may, may look as though I'm trying to tilt towards uh, 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 the ladies more than the guys. Ruth Denzer, good evening. Glad to have you this evening. I salute you. So, it's going to look like I'm tilting more to the ladies more than the guys, or it's going to look like I'm siding the ladies more than the guys. Now, that's not intentional. I'm only trying to follow reality from what happens. Of course, we have situations where we have the woman being bossy, being manipulative, being all sorts in the marriage and putting the man's uh, 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 life in peril. But a lot of times it's the man. And that's because the man is the man who is also the head of the home. And like I always tell my fellow men, I say being the head of the home is not a title. Being the head of the home is responsibility. It's not a title. It's not something you wear like a title. Like I'm the head of the home. Mm -mm. The moment you begin to announce it, it means you've even lost your place. It means you are not even aware who you are. How does a man ask a woman, do you know I'm the head of this house? It means you yourself, you don't even know. Being the head of the home means I'm able to give direction, I'm able to give guidance, I'm able to take responsibility, I'm able to take charge of my home. So what am I talking about? I'm saying that um, when dealing with purples, as the man, you must know the purpose of your wife. You must know why she was born, not the purpose you gave to her, the purpose God, who sent her into this world, gave to her. That is how to give guidance. That is how to take responsibility. You are helping her give birth to destiny. Ask her, what's your dream? You are meant to help her. You are meant to assist her. In as much as she's also meant to help you, she's meant to assist you. 
It's not a one-sided assignment where she's meant to help you and then everything that her life represents is collapsed. Not so. She was an individual before she met you. And after meeting you, her individuality and her purpose for existence is not, is, is not supposed to be flushed down the drain. No, not at all. So help her. Find out and push her into her destiny. Push her into her purpose. There's this, um, <laughs> I know this couple, a true life story now. The man is a medical doctor. And his wife is um, a marriage and relationship coach. Now, this man has so much encouraged and assisted and helped his wife's assignment. And he's just a part of it. He would go as far as buy her equipment worth millions of Naira so that she can be on TV so that she can be on social media, creating her own content. He gives her that much encouragement. He's part of the shows. He helps her script her programs. Then we have the woman. When you see her assisting her husband in the delivery room, she's not a medical doctor. She did not even study anything related to medicine. But you will see her giving her husband corrections on what to do. <laughs> So she did not become a medical doctor. Her husband did not become a relationship coach. But they are helping themselves. And both of them are growing in their purpose, in their assignment. Oh, yes. So when I'm talking about purpose, I'm talking about you have to help each other. You have to complement each other. And so single lady, single guy... If that person is coming into your life to change your destiny, don't marry them. Don't marry him. Don't marry her. These are the things to discuss. These are the things to find out. Tell them what your life is about. They should know from day one. Very, very important. Because at the end of the day, after you have gone to the altar and you've said, I do, I do. By the time you get back, in fact, that very day, you begin to ask yourself, okay, what next? Is this all? <laughs> My brother, I greet you, Patrick Edeke. Welcome. Thank you so much for joining in. I salute you. You just walk. That's why I tell people. I said, Is it, okay, we, we, we see a lot of um, videos of uh, where a guy goes down on his knee proposing to a lady in a park, in a, in a mall, and you hear people going, say yes now, say yes now, say yes now. I'm, in my mind, I'm like, shut up. Say yes, how? Are you the one saying yes for them? Okay, after they've said yes, and you clap, and you walk away, you go back home, they go into their hell. It's the same thing. Parents, because weddings have been fixed, so we can't cancel. Because wedding gowns have been sewn. Because halls have been paid for. So you just have to marry this person. Ah, it's going to be an embarrassment to the family name. What? And then after the wedding, everybody shares the grace and go back home. And leave you to your cross, whatever cross you've created for yourself. See, before you make the decision to get married to someone, make sure it is your decision. Own it. Never be cajoled, never be pushed, never be directed by anybody to get into marriage. At the end of the day, it is you who will be inside the marriage and nobody else. Very, very important. Okay, I'm going to begin to... Now, by the way, when I talk about you, purpose now, I'm not saying that when you... Okay, there's this uh, myth that I hear people talking about. Marry somebody that is like you. No. That's absolute trash. Don't marry somebody who is like you. Don't. Life was meant to have... 
spices, difference. Even God appreciates difference. Life becomes interesting where there's difference. Imagine a house where there are two talkatives. Imagine a house where there are two quiet people, introverts. No. There's, there's a need for balance. There's a need for variety. So you don't necessarily have to marry someone who is like you. Marry someone who can understand you and relate with you and connect with you. When you see cross, uh, uh, jigsaw puzzles, no two jigsaw puzzles uh, uh, have the same shape. But they are meant to get in to the, other pers- uh, to the other piece and fit to create an image. That's what marriage is like. That's what marriage is. And so, uh, 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 understand. Take for, take, for instance, you are traveling to Lagos. You're traveling to Lagos or traveling anywhere, and you get into either a vehicle or you get into a flight. You're going to have different people. Doctors, lawyers, engineers, artisans, different people who have different life assignments and different calling. But what's unique about all of you in that plane or in that vehicle? You are going to the same destination. That's key. That's key. So in marriage, when you are getting married to someone, understand that both of you are going to the same destination. That's what is important. So you may have, you may have different life agenda, but the ability to work together with those different life agenda, but heading towards the same destination is important. So where is your family headed? Where is your marriage headed? That's what is, is important, irrespective of your difference, irrespective of your, of, 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 of your difference in purpose. So I want to round up by um, saying something or maybe sharing, like I promised, how to know your purpose. For, because a lot of people don't know how to identify, talk less of knowing their purpose. And so they live life all throughout and... It's as though they are a misfit in life. So, number one, you have to find out from God. Because God created you. No two human beings have the same fingerprints. No two human beings. Either now, in the past, or in the future. Nobody will be born with the same fingerprint as you. That's how unique you are. That's how different you are. Created by this same one God. So, God knows why he created you. Ask him in the place of prayer. Pray. Ask God, why was I born? Why am I here? And he will begin to talk to you. Somebody says, but I don't know how God talks to me. That's a different matter altogether. Here's how I used to explain it. If my phone rings now and I pick it up and I hear my wife's voice on the other end of the line, even if it's not her number, I know my wife's voice. <laughs> I know her voice. I, why do I know her voice? I have a relationship with her. But some other person would call, and I'm like, the person is trying to explain. Oh, this, don't you know me? Uh, the, the person is trying to explain, and I, I, I can't place it. But the moment my wife says, hello, I know it's my wife's voice. Why? I have a relationship with her. Before my mom passed on, if my mom were to call me over the phone, the moment he calls my name, ah, that's mommy. The the moment I dropped from the womb, I started hearing her voice. (laughs) That's mommy. I have a relationship with her. I don't have to ask, "Mm -mm, is who is this? No, I don't have to. So the reason many people don't hear God is because they don't have a relationship with God. Hello? Yeah. If you have a relationship with God, you will know how to hear him. Jesus said, my sheep hear my voice, and they know the voice of the shepherd. So, so for those who don't know how, you will know. Because you have a relationship with him. I can't tell you this is the way God talks. Because that's the way I have a relationship with him. I can't. 
So that's number one. Number two, God doesn't necessarily speak directly into our ears all the time. A lot of times, God speaks through people. Yes, sis, my sheep hear my voice. Very key. God speaks through people. God speaks through people. I used to tell my wife, I said, God can speak to us through a five-year-old child. So that little child is talking, and you think that that child is the one talking. God is speaking through the child. And if you are attentive, if you pay attention, you could just get the answer you've been looking for for years now. So I'm alert. I'm on alert all the time because I'm expecting God to talk to me directly or indirectly. Think about it. God spoke to a prophet through a donkey. So at that point in time, the, the prophet was not hearing God anymore. God said, mm -mm, I will reach you. And he used a donkey to speak to the prophet. A donkey saved the prophet's life. That waiter can be a mouthpiece of God. That Uber driver can be a mouthpiece of God. So always be attentive because God can speak to you through people. A lot of times it could even be as a confirmation. A lot of times it could just, whatever it is, be open in your spirit to listen. The third thing that um, would make you understand what your purpose in life is, your design. Your design. So if you watch the design of a phone, it was designed for the things it was created to do. It has a screen so you can watch videos. Uh, it has the earpiece up here and the mouthpiece down here. So uh, when you are calling, so the design explains what it was created for. If you want to scoop water, you look for something that you can use to scoop water. You don't, you wouldn't use this now to scoop water. It's not designed to contain water. So the design of a thing explains or goes a long way to point out or to as a pointer to what the purpose of that thing is meant to be. So what is your design? We're talking about design now. We are talking about what are your abilities? What are your giftings? What are those things that have been put inside you that you do with ease? Design. Design. It's possible for you to be the one to observe it. It's also possible for someone else to be the one to observe it. But don't ignore your design. Because your design goes a long way to explain what you were created for. It's very important that you understand your purpose in life. Because if you don't, Fulfillment only comes from the, place, from the place of discovery of purpose. As you accomplish that daily goal towards your purpose or your assignment on this earth, it brings you joy. It brings you gladness. It brings you fulfillment. It doesn't matter if you are married or not. You can be married and not achieving purpose. You will be living a frustrated life. You will be living a painful life. And for those of us who are singles... Please, it's a very key thing to watch out for. It's not about what that person's purpose is. Is this, for instance, am, 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 am I, am I, am, my wife is into fashion and beauty. I'm a marriage coach and relationship coach. So while I'm counseling, she's not counseling as well. And I cannot begin to say, ah, honey, uh, you're not interested in this thing that I'm doing. Oh, no. <laughs> Her, her passion is fashion, beauty, hair products. Th those are the things she wakes up in the morning to think about. And when I wake up in the morning, if I want to see her day come alive, I should, I should be talking about her hair products. I should be talking about her business. I should be talking about the things that give her joy. 
I'm not trying to get her to like the thing that gives me joy. No, that's selfishness. <laughs> no, that's selfishness. I should encourage her passion. I should encourage her dreams. I should make her dreams better than before she met me. She also should do likewise. See, marriage is about giving. What am I giving to my partner? It's not, a, a lot of times it's about what I'm taking. We take too much until there's nothing more to take. And then we begin to attack our partner. No. Don't take. Be a giver. I ask a lot of people in premarital, why did you marry him? Or why did you decide to marry him? Why did you decide to marry her? And I'm hearing answers like, he loves me. She loves me. She, 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 she's well, well spoken. Uh, uh, she, she, he understands me. He's all me, 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 me. What did you go into that person's life to do for them? A lot of people hardly think about that. It's all me. It's all me. And what is the reason you want to walk out? Me again. Me again. He stopped doing this. She stopped doing this. So I want to walk out. No. Not at all. Not at all. So my final words for us this evening. Know your purpose. Be focused on your purpose. And if you are married, if you are a guy, please encourage your wife. Encourage your wife in her purpose. Encourage your wife in her assignment. You see, this is one of the reasons why we have all these ladies that are rebelling today. Some of them say they don't even want to get married. You are having all this boss lady stuff all around the place. It's simply because a lot of our men are trying to suppress the women. And I tell people that a lot of times it's just sheer insecurity. The man feels that, oh, if my wife is, 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 is more exposed or is more out there, more than myself, it, it doesn't speak well. It doesn't show that I'm the man. It doesn't show that I, different, very wild reasons out there. Very wild reasons out there. No, be secured in who you are. Help your wife. Promote your wife. Lift her. She's your glory. Did you hear me? She's your glory. And sister, when you get in to be married to that guy, <laughs> give him all the best help you can. Let him feel your presence. Let him feel that he has someone that he can look up to in a wife. Singles, if you're not married yet, please, before you get married, consider purpose. Let him know what your purpose is. Let her know what your purpose is. So that if they cannot fit in, it's best both of you walk away. A broken relationship is far better than a broken marriage. So that's where we're going to wrap up today. And um, Thank you for staying with me this evening. Thank you, thank you, thank you so much. I believe uh, someone has really been blessed this evening in some of the things that we've shared. Um, for guys, please, encourage your wives. Ladies, encourage your husbands. And maybe I should end with this advice to some of the ladies. If you are already married and um, your husband is not giving you the kind of support you need, um, I don't know. There's something um, I would love to share one of these days. It's about selling, selling, selling. I talked about it last time we had um, a meeting briefly, uh, the Q&A seg uh, segment, about selling. Maybe if you check uh, 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 the link on, on my bio, you would see uh, uh, um, a link that would lead you to the past sessions that we've had. Pick it and listen. There's one I really talked about selling. There's a way to convince your husband about your purpose. You don't fight him. You don't, if you may have missed that opportunity while you were dating, while you were courting, you know, to communicate with him and to make him understand and to see, you can still do that. You can still do that. 
you can still do that. So this brings us to the end of our Q&A segment for today. Um, if you came in a little later, you can still get back to my IGTV and uh, watch uh, the video shortly after now so you can follow from the beginning. I said so many things today and I really want you to get it, you know, so it can help you. And I want you to be fulfilled in life. I want you to be prosperous in life. I want you to enjoy your life. I want you to. So do that and go back, listen to those, uh, 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 to, to those thoughts from the beginning. And I know a lot of people will still come after now. Uh, please watch. And always feel free, if you have any question that you think we can deal on this Q&A segment, which we happen to have every Sunday evening, 8.30, please send me those questions in my inbox. And while we treat on them, I believe that we'll be able to, you know, touch you and reach you you at the point of your need. Thank you so much for staying with me once again this evening. I really appreciate each and every one of you. And I pray that your marriage, your relationship will become successful even as you've intended it to be. Thank you once again. And God bless you. Good night and bye-bye.